Check, check. Check, 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 check. Amen. Let's pray for some time. Thank you, God, for giving us one more week to celebrate his goodness in this world which is rough, which is tough. God's grace and God's love helped us to gather together as one body from different nationalities, tribes, tongues, from different families. We come to this spiritual household to offer spiritual sacrifices to God our Father through Jesus Christ our Lord in the Holy Spirit. So let's lift our voices and say, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your mercies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Spend some time in personal thanksgiving and with grateful hearts. Hallelujah. Let's offer him praises. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You are good. You are good all the time. And Lord, we thank you for all your small, small mercies which you give us. Big, big, for our big, big challenges. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for all your goodness. Today, Lord, we are gathered in one of God. Lord, in your house, which you have set in this place, in this generation. Lord, to offer our worship and thanksgiving. Oh, Father, we thank you that you have enabled us, Lord, to lift your name in this place. For, a, for around 15 years in this place, oh Father. We thank you, Father. It's not that we came, it's you who brought us with a Lord outstretched arm, with a mighty hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of our praises. You're worthy of our thanksgiving. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Father. Lord, this morning, help us, Lord, to worship in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Everybody go on, spend some time in personal thanksgiving for his corporate goodness. Hallelujah. You kept us from, Lord, you kept our life from death. You kept our feet from falling. You kept our eyes from tears. Oh, Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Oh, we, lo we love you, Lord, we love you, Lord, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, we give you our praise. 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 We offer our thanksgiving to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for translating us from the kingdom of darkness into the, Lord, eternal kingdom of your Son. Hallelujah. Earlier we were not a people, but now we are a people. We are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. Set apart to declare your glorious works. Hallelujah. How great you are. O creator of the universe. O redeemer of our souls. O shepherd of, our, of thy sheep. Hallelujah. The great I am. The door, the way, the truth and the life. Lord, we worship you. O bread of life, we honor you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, the river of living water, we worship you. Hallelujah. Jeeva Thannire. Hallelujah. Ume Aradikrom. Valium Satyum. Jeeva Numagi Devane. Ume Aradikrom. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeeva Apame. Ume Aradikrom. Hallelujah. Ella Namatulum Peria Devane. Ume Aradikrom. 
worship you lord oh father open our eyes to see you open our eyes to see you this morning oh lord that we and we will be satisfied by seeing your form hallelujah thank you father thank you father thank you lord jesus this morning we orient our hearts towards you hallelujah from all our other things our hearts are concentrated on you our eyes are focused on you our ears are concentrated on hearing from you lord hallelujah thank you father shepherd of my soul i give you full control wherever you may lead i will follow i have made a choice to listen to your voice wherever you may lead i will go oh shepherd of my soul i give you full control wherever you may lead i will follow i have made a choice to listen to your voice wherever you may lead i will go can we obey the shepherd to the shepherd of my soul shepherd of my soul can we all rise up to our feet and give him the praise for he deserves the glory you may lead i will follow i have made i have made a choice to listen to your voice wherever you may lead i will go be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream the shepherd of my soul is by my side should i face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep the shepherd of my soul will be my guide sing it out shepherd of my soul i give you full control wherever you may lead i will follow i have made a choice your voice wherever you may lead i will go shepherd of my soul everyone together shepherd of my soul give him full control give him full control lord we give you a full control hallelujah holy spirit take full control of the service this morning oh i have made a choice to listen to your voice your sweet voice your gentle voice the voice that thunders in the desert oh be it in a quiet it in a quiet pasture or oh, by a gentle stream the shepherd of my soul is by my side should i face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep the shepherd of my soul will be my god should i face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep the shepherd of my soul will be my god should i face should i face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep the shepherd of my soul will be my god hallelujah the shepherd of my soul will be my god oh the shepherd of my soul will be my god somebody who give their control to the shepherd of our soul give him a shout of praise this morning hallelujah praise the lord we give you the praise of father hallelujah 
as we worship god freely here we stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in manipur hallelujah i have seen videos that every sunday they gather in their refugee camps and ask god for their blessing for his blessing their homes are burnt some of their children children are raped hallelujah they're facing so much of stress and turmoil and anguish hallelujah so we are going to sing a prayer corporately from psalm 74 this morning this is our prayer to the almighty god and we will pray it responsibly and i say responsibly one verse i will read the second one you should read okay hallelujah like that we go hallelujah and we will uh, read the last two verses together amen are you ready to say this prayer to the almighty god amen hallelujah praise the lord psalm 74 Hallelujah and the last two verses we will read together but otherwise we read responsibly amen if you took your portion say an amen amen hallelujah i didn't say habakkuk or uh, what is that hallelujah obadiah uh, did you all take the scripture amen okay oh god why have you rejected us forever why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pasture turn your steps towards these everlasting ruins all this destruction the enemy has brought on the sanctuary they behaved like men wielding axes to cut through a thicket of trees they burned your sanctuary to the ground they defiled the dwelling place of your name we are given no signs from god no prophets are left and none of us knows how long this will be why do you hold back your hand your right hand take it from the folds of your garment and destroy them it was you who split open the sea by your power you broke the heads of the monster in the waters it was you who opened up springs and streams you dried up the ever flowing rivers It was you who set all the boundaries of the earth you made both summer and winter Do not hand over the life of your dove to wild beast do not forget the lives of your afflicted people especially in Manipur forever Do not let the oppressed retreat in disgrace may the poor and needy praise your name let's sing the last two verses together rise up o god and defend your cause remember how fools mock you all day long do not ignore the clamor of your adversaries the uproar of your enemies which rises continually amen amen father as we have read today do not hand over the life of your dove to wild beasts lord we pray for the cookie cookie zo community the mate community especially lord together as a church we rise up and we pray lord have mercy father let violence stop let your kingdom come let the brothers and sisters who are worshiping you in spirit and in truth in outside in the refugee camps be strengthened by your grace and lord today we know that the spirit which is moving amongst us is with them too hallelujah hallelujah and we together with one accord pray for a revival can we all pray together every mouth open every mouth open every mouth open lord let your kingdom come we have heard violence after violence young children are being raped and mutilated lord dalits are being oppressed casteism is on hallelujah a big time high violence in our streets dakoiti and thagari hallelujah oh lord your sacred places are being vandalized how long lord 
How long, Lord? We ask you today that as watchmen of this land, we together cry out to you, Lord. We cry out to you, Lord. Jesus, have mercy on the land. Have mercy on the land. Have mercy on the land. Hallelujah. Every heart pray. Every hands lifted up in prayer. Oh Lord, we want to see a miracle. We want to see the government responsive. Lord Jesus, let oppression stop. Let our children go back to schools. Let your children gather back Lord, among the ruined places of worship. Let not the enemy's plan succeed in the name of Jesus. You said you will build your church and the gates of hates will not prevail. Hallelujah. Build your church, oh God. 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 Hear the cry of the oppressed. Hear the cry of the orphan. Hear the cry of the widow. Hear the cry of the church. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. We do not take this grace for granted. Thank you for the freedom you gave us in Arikere. Thank you, Lord, for this place which you set apart. Thank you, Lord, for the brothers and sisters who have walked through these hallelujah steps. Hallelujah to receive your word. And today, too, your children have come. Hallelujah. You're a faithful God. You're our Father. And we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Lord. We honor your name. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands together, invite the worship team together. Hallelujah. And they will come and lead us in singing. Hallelujah. We will sing to the Lord together. Those who are seated in the back, there are some more place in the front. You can come and occupy your place so that people who come later can take their place. Hallelujah. We, let's be accommodative of one another. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are happy in this morning? Are we happy? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All the time. Okay, let's sing together.
Hallelujah. Stand against the 
fight on my Nothing else matters, Lord. Because Jesus is at the center of it all, Lord. You're the center, Lord. You're the center in our heart, Lord. You're the center in our church, Lord. Oh, glory. Oh. Jesus is at the center of it all. center of it all, from beginning to the end, it'll always be, it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus at the center, the Jesus said.
center of my life. Jesus be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it'll always be, it's always be you, Jesus. 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 Jesus be the center of your church. From the beginning to the end, it'll always be, it's always be you, Jesus. Do 
Lord, thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your longness, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we stand, we will do the confession of our faith, the profession of that we hold together, the Nicene Creed. We will confess it together. The Bible says we need to hold the profession of our faith. Amen. Everybody say profession of our faith, the confession of our beliefs. Hallelujah. And we will do that as uh, it's being displayed on the screen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Can we do it? One, two, go. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands together and give God a shout of praise. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I welcome all of you who have joined for this special service. Uh, still, is there any ch chairs are here? There are chairs here. Those who want to sit can sit. I think we are okay. Okay. All right. 
thank you all for joining this special Sunday service. Uh, it's a joy always to gather together and worship. In Tamil service, we have a lot of free seats. In English service, also some free seats are there. So, hallelujah. Uh, we thank God for the opportunities we have. And uh, next week onwards, our regular services will continue. Don't forget our Tamil service at 8 o'clock and uh, Sunday school at 9.30 and the English service at 10.30. Amen. Glory be to God. Uh, this first uh, Tuesday, Tuesday is the first of this, uh, of August, uh, a new month. We will have a blessing night here at 7 o'clock. I request all of you to come with your Bibles, meditating on God's word. I know all of us are online, very busy. When we are not busy, I don't know, but hallelujah. Blessed is the man who meditates on the law of the Lord day and night. Never give an excuse from the things of God. That's my suggestion to you. Everybody say suggestion. I know it's a, uh, it's a difficult proposition, hallelujah, but still it's a humble suggestion that you will come on the weekdays also. You can come here. You can come here. Show the seats. Raju, just tell them the seats wherever it's free. You are having a seat there? You don't have a seat? You have a seat? Okay. Come, come. Rahul, come here. Spriti, you have a seat here. Ayan, move this side. Move that side. Move, that. move inside. Hallelujah. Spriti, come here. Sit here. Okay. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God. All right. It's uh, So first of this month is Tuesday. Wednesday, we will not be having the Bible study. So Tuesday, first we will have our uh, blessing night. Please come uh, and meditate on God's word. Be encouraged by the theme of this month. Then, if possible, have some Pani Puri be below. Or ask Lakshmi Amma. She will give everybody Pani Puri. Especially her grandchildren, she will specially give the Pani Puri. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, Pani Puri is there down. You can come. Have some time of family time. That's also needed. I was hearing from a, a magician in Kerala who has now left his profession. His name is Gopinath Mudukkad. He's a very famous magician. But now he's doing a service among the uh, autistic children. Autistic children. Gopinath magician, Gopinath Mudukkad. So he had a big house. And he sold it to fund this uh, aut uh, life for autistic children and, you know, differently able, as they call it. Uh, and he was telling that our children need to have our prime time. He, I was amazed that not even a pastor is telling that, but Gopinath Mudukkad is telling, our children needs our prime time every day. What is our prime time? Every day prime time. What is the prime time? TV, TV time, what is it? 7 to 9, that is prime time. If you put your serials, 7 to 9, that is the time of serials. So he was telling that 7 to 9, don't compromise for anything. Let your children come, eat with you, talk with one another. Uh, and uh, he was telling how his life changed from a big house. And he came down to a smaller house. There is so much of fun, there is so much of joy, there is so much of... Uh, I would say, togetherness in the family. So life is not in the sophistication. Life is in how simple you make it every day. Hallelujah. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, it's, that is the truth of life. That's the philosophy of life. Life is not in the sophistication. Life is in the simple things and how you rejoice and how you take it. Hallelujah. In that thing. So, uh, and that's why the TV wants it as prime time. Advertisements are there, serials are there, uh, all the unwanted stuffs are there. But uh, he was, uh, I'm encouraging you the same. Spend time with your family. Once come to the church, let them know, let the children know that it's church time. It's Wednesday Bible study time. It's monthly first time. Let's get the blessings from God. Those things can only be taught from the parents to the student, for, to the uh, children. So, I hope you will take this very importantly. Amen. Friday morning, we have the fasting and prayer here. You can have a solid time of prayer Friday morning. You can come and pray for various issues that are concerning us. Hallelujah. Today, it's a 
joy to have dr jacob cherian in in midst of us but before that is there anybody new here for the first time anybody is new who have come here for the first time i see uh, whose sister your sister okay welcome give them a big god bless hallelujah <laughs> praise the lord give them a welcome brochure please somebody who can uh, okay when they go back also you can take it hallelujah gift from our side may the lord bless you your sister was where in bangalore only no chennai okay okay god bless i have seen you for the first day first day how is swami you sir okay okay god bless you nice to see you i um, mean anybody else hallelujah for the first time i see your uh, uh, that's your dad uncle uncle her dad her dad okay okay god bless you give him a big god bless thank god for parents for joining us today we thank god for his uh, blessings hallelujah amen uh, okay dr jacob chere needs no introduction to our church hallelujah he is a mentor he is a father he is uh, a pastor to pastors and i always say uh, when he came into our lives our lives changed hallelujah and so the church life uh, well that's a blessing he is a blessing and he was telling me something that was in his heart he is going next week to guwahati he is going next week to guwahati and he's training some pastors now the biggest challenge in christianity is to first of all read god's word read it in context apply it because a lot of uh, you know you know how they interpret the scriptures it's it's a, it's a very delicate issue now and people are go, going wayward but i always thank god for the congregations which host dr jacob cherry and his and you know his uh, disciples in that fact for the proper teaching of god's word exposition of god's word so they have a, a sbc commentary sbc commentary uh, which is done in hindi of course i think we have had given to some of you here i don't know how many of you have used it uh, but are we giving them the hindi one no english one they all know english okay so they are planning to give that sbc commentary which is a very good resource for pastors and he said he has a need of 20000 okay usually i don't take any offerings you know that i don't take any special offer but this is an opportunity for you yeah subsidized rate for giving them he needs another 20000 amen so today whatever offering you give at least 20k we will be giving to uh, his trip hallelujah it's a joy to partner with him so can we put on the upi if you can uh, generously consider giving hallelujah so today he will leave that worry and he will go happily and minister in the northeast especially you know the calamities that are happening there so we will send hallelujah so whoever uh, with prayer you can say lord thank you for helping me with supporting this noble cause of helping uh, the uh, i know even if i ask individuals they will give but i want all of us to do it as a corporate initiative so the upi code is there and the offerings will be taken hallelujah let's pray to god that he will help us and be to be a continual blessing let's pray father we thank you for this wonderful privilege of being a blessing to the nations lord especially we pray for this upcoming uh, meetings in guwahati where you're going to send your servant as he spend some time there with the believers pastors and as he desires to give the sbc commentary we have a need that has been spoken in your presence it will be met as we together pitch in with our support for this mission we thank you father that you're going to fulfill it and you're going to make a way where there seems to be no way hallelujah thank you lord with a, with gratefulness in our hearts we specially put today's offering a special part of it towards that cause we pray that whatever we have will multiply and it will satisfy the crowd and the hungry souls we thank you for making us as a blessing in jesus name we pray amen amen so those who have cash you can those who have cash you can lift your hands others you can give to your give to the wonderful gentlemen coming don't drive them off just say if you don't have cash it's okay just say thank you for your service and they will be prompted to some people uh, tell up oh, <laughs> <laughs> they are they are volunteers in the church so do that hallelujah so hope you understood what we are doing you can contribute generously to the cause of the gospel 
and to the cause of Jesus Christ. Uh, one announcement regarding the souvenir which we are publishing. Thank you for the articles. We got an overwhelming articles, your photos, your pics, all those things. But one, one uh, uh, thing which I want to tell you is we will be editing it. Okay? We will be editing it. So don't get uh, upset if some of your lines are not there, if some of your sentences are not there, if uh, the alignment, you know, we have to do a lot of stuff. So if I don't tell this, some of, you know, this devil is a cunning fellow. Everybody say, devil is a cunning fellow. I wrote this much, spent night after night, and pastor didn't put, please don't fight at me. You fight with the devil. But we have a page limit also. As far as I know, we have, we want to release a 60 page. Now, putting all, we how much it came to? 120, 110. So we have to cut. Anyway, I didn't receive the full proof. So we will be cutting a lot of stuffs and making it probably 60 or let's see if we can bargain. and that. So that's a predicament which we are in, just telling for the betterment of the people of God. Amen. But it's going to be a good work project. Thank you for writing. Thank you for thinking. Thank you for, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a, it's a, that, the, more than the magazine, it's how you wrote, you, you took some time, you put your thoughts, you put that as testimony, you put your photos. Thank you so much and may the Lord reward you. Amen. So without any further uh, delay, we will invite to Dr. Jacob Cherian with a round of applause to <laughs> preach from God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord's name be glorified. Amen. Morning. What a delight to be with you this morning. beautiful congregation. There are a lot of things I already enjoyed in the service. Uh, one of the things I, I really enjoyed is that fact that you took time to think about others and especially a group of people who are not like us. They are not our people. You know, when you think of the kooky Christians, any kooky person here? No. Right? And uh, they, they, it's a very different culture, different world. And uh, also the metes. By the way, in SABC, we have had cookie students and we have had Mete Christian students, Amen. both sides. And, uh, and um, both have suffered. Christians from both sides have suffered. And uh, to take time to pray and a good use of Psalms, I really commend you on that. Many people don't know what to do with the Psalms. Uh, they know what to do with the good parts of Psalms, right? There are Psalms, the Lord is my shepherd. How nice, all very nice. Uh, and bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. We will end usually in Tamil service with that. But there are other psalms, right? There are some psalms that are uh, very problematic. Amen. Uh, you read that and say, what? Can you talk to God like this? Yes. Amen. You know why? Because you are already thinking like that in your heart. <laughs> you just have to bring it out. You are saying, God, why, can, why are you not helping me? Why have you left me? That is genuine prayer. Amen. I mean, you really express. You become brutally honest with God. Because anyway, God knows what is in my heart. Right? Why not tell him that? And so, these are called Psalms of Lament. Lament is when you're crying and you're saying, Lord, this is not right. 
You are not. See, there are times God is good all the time, all the time God is good. We started with that, right? You know why we said that? When he said God is good, why did you say all the time? Because of Don Moen. <laughs> After Don Moen came, he tells us to say it like that. Usually, otherwise, you would have said, God is good, you will say, Amen. So we are trained to say things in a certain way. But it's not all, all the time in the book of Psalms. God is good. Because is your life very, 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 very happy all the time? Hello? Yes or no? Not. That is real life. So sometimes when we think or we try to tell people, if you are following Jesus, you have faith and you have the spirit, then you will be only on cloud nine all the time. I remember a friend of mine, whenever I would meet him, he was also a pastor. How are you? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Everything wonderful. But the reality was things were not wonderful in his life. Things are really messed up right now for him. But so, you and I have to be honest. One of the things when you read the book of Psalms, please, is learn that the psalmists are honest before God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. They will sometimes tell God, you are not fair, you are not good. But I still trust in you. I know you will bring it through. Yes, trust is more important just than saying I believe. Trust God. That's so wonderful. I really appreciate also that you took time to read the, can we switch that off? I don't know, is there a way to take that fellow off from there? I didn't like it. <laughs> Kept on there. Yeah, thank you. What's that? I told him, next time, don't, don't trouble me like that. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Yes, you, you read through the Nicene Creed. Now, Many churches don't even know what that is. Okay? Nicene Creed is an ancient creed in slightly different forms. Of course, we are reading it in English. But by that, do you realize you and I are connecting with God's people through the centuries? Amen. It's not that we today know what to do when we worship. This is the way we worship. Today, there are millions of churches, millions of churches around the world where they have read that. And you are one of the few among the Pentecostal churches to have done that. I don't know of too many Pentecostal churches where they do something good like that. I sometimes preach in the CSI church and they will definitely read that, a form of that. So I congratulate you on that. You also said the Lord's Prayer. Right? Uh, some of you need to learn that. We only come from Pentecostal background. So I, I really commend you and uh, wonderful people leading us in worship. All of you, such a delight for me. I just feel relaxed. I, you, I hope you are. So I'm going to just take my time. He has not told me when to finish. 10 o'clock, it's 10 o'clock. When do you finish? And I'm speaking in English. I will speak in simple English, okay? So, uh, so that you can understand Today I want to speak about a certain person I came to know very late. I mean, I had heard about him, but I came to know him, and I'm still coming to know him now. He's in the Bible. He's a very interesting man. Now, his name is connected to love, to kiss, love. Now, I know all of you children. How many children below the age of 10 here? How many people below the age of 10? 10 and below. You have, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Others of you growing up. Do you remember, have you heard the story of Sleeping Beauty? Yes. Remember the story of Sleeping Beauty? What happened in Sleeping Beauty story? She is beautiful, but some curse came on her, right? And she was not able to get up. And then when a beautiful, a handsome prince came and expressed his love, what happened? <gasps> she came back to life. Okay. There's another beautiful story, of course, now because of the movie made on that Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, Some of you have seen it? Yeah, I know some of you don't believe in seeing movies, but that's okay. Forgive me for using this illustration. There are some nice stories. And what is that story? That is a... There is a man who was a prince, but he was under some curse and he became this very 
sad looking, but he really loves this girl. And one day when she expresses her love, what happens? Ooh, he becomes beautiful. See, all these stories are our human intimations. We are beginning to realize that something is there in this universe. Beauty. Beauty is there in this universe. In ancient cultures, not only Christian cultures, there is a reverence towards beauty. Now, don't think beauty is this Miss India and Miss Universe. That is one way of looking at beauty. But there is something called beautiful. Goodness is beautiful. And you can, you can see it. He mentioned about this magician. I was just searching for the first time. So when he does that, when he gives up a beautiful house, his own possession, to serve a group of children, differently abled, we call them children, we say, man, what is this? Normal people don't do this, right? But what do we say? This is beautiful. God has a purpose in this universe. And to make it beautiful, that's his purpose. Beauty. And he wants to begin with making his people who believe in him beautiful people. How does God do that? All of us. God wants to make us beautiful Christians. Beautiful. How? Not that all of us will get some prize in some beauty contest. No, no, no. God has a one way of doing it. It's an amazing way. And all these stories that we read here and there, Beauty and the Beast, all that is trying to come to that. And that is, he changes us by his love. Only love can change us. Amen. Not fear. You know, this idea of God, you know, you, you better fear him, otherwise he may do something terrible to you. That is not this book. So there is a book in your New Testament which is named after love. New Testament, not Song of Songs. Okay. Letters of Paul. How many letters of Paul are there? 13. Good. Okay. And there are these letters are arranged in a certain way. You will first see the nine, first nine letters are arranged to churches. So you have, which is the first one? Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. Did you notice all of them are to churches? Then comes 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon. Now, did you notice those are individual names, right? So that's how they are arranged. First to churches, then to individuals. But also, there is a very simple reason they are arranged in that order. It's not chronological. It is size. Eh? When you stand in the school, kindergarten, the teacher will make the children stand in line. How? Hey, Lambu, you go and sit on the, stand at the back, right? According to height. So also, the letters of Paul are arranged according to size. Are you getting it? The longer ones first and then the smaller ones. So the smallest one is which one? Which is the smallest one? Philemon. So turn to Philemon today. Philemon is a very common Greek name, Greco-Roman name. It's not a Christian name, okay? By the way, there are no Christian names in the Bible. <laughs> you will have Jewish names like Jacob, which means, I don't know, what is the meaning of the word Jacob? Actually, literally it means heel grasper. Heel grasper. Metaphorically it means deceiver. So you have a wonderful name like that. Deceiver. <laughs> There's a Hebrew names. There's nothing Christian about it. 
Then you have name Paul. Is Paul a Christian name? I know if you meet somebody today in India and he says, my name is Paul Thomas, you'll say he's a from the Christian. Because uh, usually persons from other religions will not give that name. Because in our mind, Paul is Christian. But Paul is a Roman name. Paulos is a common Roman name. Some Christians who had Paul became followers of Jesus. They didn't change their name. You don't need to change your name to follow Jesus. In Philippians chapter 2, you'll read about a, name, a man with a long name. Epaphroditus. <laughs> long name. Do you know the meaning of that name? Epaphroditus means dedicated to Aphrodite. To the goddess Aphrodite. So somebody who has a name. What's your name? Dedicated to Aphrodite. But he's follower of Jesus. You don't need to change your name. There's nothing Christian about any name. Alright. So here we have a man whose name is Philemon or Philemon. And some of you may have heard this Greek verb phileo, which means to love. It comes from that. The word for kiss in Greek. Remember, there's a place where Paul will say, greet each other with a holy kiss. Remember that? So the word philema. Now you can see the name. His name is so close to that, right? So here is a man to whom Paul writes a letter. There's a lot happening here. I won't have the time to explain everything. But Philemon is a follower of Jesus, but more than that, he's very close to Paul. Paul loves him. He calls him my beloved brother. And we will read and we will see what is happening. So are you ready to read with me? Keep your Bibles open as we come to meet a wonderful brother called Philemon or Philemon. You see, friends, we are all called to follow Jesus. But we don't follow Jesus all alone. It's not that, oh, Jesus is there, I am there. Only, only both of us. Yes, there are times when you and I just are with Jesus alone. And all of us must have those times when we just, you and us, Jesus and me. That's fine. But when we follow Jesus, suddenly we see there are a lot of others also following Jesus. Amen. We are not following Jesus all alone. Amen. That's why we gather in the church. We need each other. You know, in the, during the time of the pandemic, the COVID, we got so used to sitting at home and putting that click. Now, the many churches in many places, they don't have smartphones. So there was no click in joining a church. Now, some people became very comfortable. Man, this is nice. I can sit in my, on my bed and in my night clothes and, you know. And some people were very serious. They put it on. The, they got dressed and sat in their house. Whichever way. But finally, we need each other. Thank God we are able to meet like this. And there was a church that met in his house. So when we are following Jesus, sometimes you suddenly notice somebody standing and walking beside you. They may be a wonderful person and we need to learn from them. So I'm inviting you, even after this thing is over, go back home, read it slowly again today. Get to know this man because he's a man who has been transformed by the gospel. He has been kissed by the gospel. His name itself means affectionate one. Or the one who loves. Walk with him, you will learn something from him. For us to learn as we follow Jesus. So let's read together. Let's read together. Um, whichever language you're reading in, I'm reading in English. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother. So Paul is writing this from a prison. Interesting. Life is not always great for everybody, including Paul. Many of his letters he wrote from a prison. Philippians, he wrote from a prison. It was not from a nice, comfortable, relaxed AC room. In a very uncomfortable prison. I came in a taxi here this morning. I could tell him, can you please put the AC on? I'll be more comfortable. You know, life is comfortable. But he was writing from a prison. And you will find whenever he writes from a prison, he does not talk anything about the prison. Very interesting. 
He doesn't say, oh, the bed is not so nice, you know, the windows are not opening or uh, nothing. He doesn't say anything. He's only concerned about the other things. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's an amazing guy, Paul. Yeah, and so he says, to whom? To Philemon, our dear friend, beloved friend and fellow worker. Philemon, he, Paul considers him a very good friend. You know, later on, in we will read, he will say to him, Philemon, I am going to come out of prison soon. When I come, I'm going to stay with you and prepare the guest room for me. Now, you cannot say that to everybody, okay? Some of us have Facebook friends, don't you? Sometimes I meet somebody and say, sir, I'm your friend. I'm looking at that person. You, what happened? I've lost my memory. It's my friend. Sir, I'm your Facebook friend. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so you don't tell your Facebook friend, I'm coming to your playhouse, keep a guest room ready for me. You can't do that to everybody. But see what he will say, verse 22. And one thing more, prepare a guest room for me because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Keep praying. I think I'm going to come out. I'll come and stay with you. Wow. So he's very close. Paul is very close to them. So he says to Philemon, coming back to verse 1, also verse 2, to Aphia, our sister. Who is this Aphia? This sister Aphia? We don't know for sure. Could be Philemon's wife. Could be. Very often, you know, if I'm writing to Pastor Ashley, I will say Ashley and Shiva. So we usually, this is his wife. Correct? And then you have the second person name, Archippus. Again, we don't know. By the way, these are all nice Greek names. Uh, common Greek names. It's given to everybody. And uh, probably the son, we don't know whether his brother or her brother or somebody, maybe son, a fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. One thing to remember, today when we use the word church, we use, refer to a building. building. So outside this place, there is a building. There's a sign. What does it say? Shelter House Church. So referring because of this. Yes, we have got used to that, but really the church is here. If you can take this out and move somewhere else, the church has not changed, the same church. The building is changed. Here, early church, where did they meet? In homes. Usually in the home of a well-to-do person because they will have a little bigger house. Little bigger house. You know, um, the other day I was in Bombay and this dear brother who came to pick me up on the airport, the driver, he's also a believer. He's come to the Lord, he has a wife, children. And uh, he was telling me, he lives far away, two hours from Bombay. His house is only 15 by 10 feet. How much is that? 150 square feet. Four people, adult people live in that. That's it. He's a happy man. Worshipping the Lord. So, not everybody, not every believer has nice houses, big houses. But this man is a well-to-do man. So one thing we will soon find, this Philemon happens to be rich. Maybe we don't know whether he's very rich, but he is well-to-do. One of the things we know is he has slaves. Correct? And the story is about, Paul is writing. Why is Paul writing this letter? It is a recommendation letter. Recommendation so that you will take back a man who has run away. What is his name, the runaway slave's name? Onesimus. You're going to read that. And so it's basically writing. Can you please have mercy on him, take him back? So we will figure that out. So just to remind you, church, you know, sometimes you say, Our, we don't have a building, we don't have a church. No, church is a people always, always in the New Testament. Today, of course, we got used to buildings, and then we have in some places very nice buildings. And anybody who sees outside, even a person who's not a Christian, say, oh, that's a church. Because we'll have a cross or whatever. But remember in those days, Christians meet in homes. And uh, there's a church that is meeting in their home. That means he's a well-to-do man. All right. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Yes. We are slowly getting to know this man Philemon. Before you leave today, you need to meet him 
And uh, uh, along the way, you need to get to know him better. And along the way, something from his life was, must rub off on our lives. There is something special about this man. We need Not just that he had money. That's not the point. There's something else about him. Okay. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers. You know, he says, when I think of you, ah, I have joy. He says, because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I know and I hear about you that you love God's people. You are a lover. Are you are true to your name. You know, sometimes we get names. And you'll excuse me if I, I hope I don't trouble anybody here with this uh, story. I have a friend of mine and the parents called him Everest. Everybody knows Everest? Big, highest mountain. Only problem with him is very short. <laughs> so be careful when you give names to your children. <laughs> His name is Everest, but lovely brother. Lovely. He's a pastor. <laughs> and uh, But this man's name, what is his name? Philemon. What does it mean? Lover. Kisser. Affectionate person. Who shows love. We have different ways we show love. I used to find it funny, uh, Pastor Ashley, when I used to go to Kerala, a couple of my grandmothers and uh, older aunties, when they came to hug you, the way they kissed was very different. We were small children and they would hug us and not like that, but... <laughs> <laughs> As if they are <laughs> taking you in. I said, what is this? <laughs> Have you seen that? Yeah. That's how they show their love. We show love differently. But he said, you have loved God's people. That's why when I think of you, I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good Thing we share for the sake of Christ. In other words, what he's saying is, you are a partner with me. You are a partner with me. Thank you. I, I know I mentioned to you that we are going to do this. This Saturday, I'll be going to uh, Guwahati. There's a small Bible school that our college we are connected with. And uh, actually, I'm teaching two courses there online, beginning, but next week, uh, following week, uh, 7th to 12th, I'll be there physically with those students. And so I wanted to give a gift to all of them. The, by the way, this is something you also can buy. If you don't have for yourself a South Asia Bible commentary, we can get it for you, say, maybe for uh, 1,500 or a little more than that. It's a one-volume commentary on the whole Bible, 1,800 pages. So any passage in the Bible... You can open and learn from that. Okay, so it may be we can think of a project to get it here and uh, as a group and then you can buy it. So I wanted to give this as a gift and <clears throat> I know those students, many of them cannot pay that much money. It's about 1500 It's uh, Monday, it will be tra uh, shipped from Rajasthan to Guwahati. So I said, okay, maybe they can pay 500 and can we subsidize it? So thank you so much. I really appreciate you being a partner. Uh, with the work of God there. Paul sees Philemon as a partner. Now, let me tell you something more about this place. Philemon is in a very specific city. This is a real letter, okay? A real story. It's not a story. It's a, Now, where is Philemon? It does not mention in this, but there is a city called Colossae. You remember in, there's another letter written to the Colossians? Yeah? Colossians. So when you have time, read the last chapter of Colossians. Make a list of the names that are mentioned. Okay? And then come to Philemon and read the names that are mentioned. You will find some six or seven names in Colossians 4 are mentioned here. So that is good uh, evidence that 
Philemon is living in Colossians. There are many churches in Colossians. There's not one big church where 100 people, 200 people gather. All the, you know, inside a house, maybe you can have 40, 50 people. That's all churches were. There was no big mega churches in the first century. And um, <clears throat> so Paul is writing one letter to the church, which is called Colossians. And there is a man called Tychicus who's mentioned. He will take a letter to the church. But Paul says, when you go there, I want you to give a personal letter to Philemon. Why? We are going to see why. Verse 7, your love. This is a very important verse. Amen. And I want you to look in your Bibles. If there are some vernacular Bibles, I will be asking you what it says. Your love. This man is, is, <laughs> is all about his love. Has given me great joy and encouragement. Please understand, if you read the letters of Paul, Paul was not a man who had always, he was jumping with joy, always, no. Paul went through a lot of pain in life. A lot of pain. A lot of struggle. A lot of pain, a lot of struggle. Life is not easy for him. You read 2 Corinthians chapter 11, second part. The struggles Paul has gone through. The greatest apostle, in a sense, I would call him. You see, his life is not all the time very feeling very good all the time. He's going through pain. But there are times, even in your pain, when you think of some people, you feel good. Sometimes you get the phone and you look at the name. How do you feel? Do you feel the same for all the people who call you? Eh, no. Some people say, ah. I don't know whether I want to take this call. See, it's a good thing you can choose because you see the name. Eh? And you say, mm. I don't know whether I want to take the call, right? Some other name comes, wow. Who? I didn't know. I didn't expect this call. Why do you feel good? Because they bring good memories, good joy. Paul, whenever he thinks of Philemon, even though he's in prison, what happens? He has joy. Joy. Philemon brings joy because of his love. Joy and encouragement. Paul is not easy. Life is not easy in a prison, especially in the first century prison. But when he thinks of people like Philemon, he feels good. He feels good in the midst of his difficulties. Because, why does he feel good? The answer is there. This is the key to this book. Why? Tell me why. Because? Yeah. Anybody got a vernacular translation? Any vernacular? Tamil, any Tamil? Telugu, verse 7. Uh, one second, one second. Ah. Ullangal. Parashuddha Managal, that means believers. Ullangal means uh, English translation, what do you have? Uh, uh, who said bowels? Ah, you're reading King James. King James has the word bowels. Only problem is today we don't use the word bowels like that. Uh, when you have a stomach problem, you go to the doctor and the doctor asks you, how are your bowel movements? Right? It's not heart, right? NIV will say heart. Telugu says Hridayam. Hridayam is here. But actually, so what does he do? What does he do to the Hridayangal or Ullangal? What does he do? He refreshes them. What does that mean? Some of us who are on computers, we have a different meaning of refresh, <laughs> right? Refresh. But refresh here. I was this morning, I was reading the text in Greek. I was just enjoying it. And I was looking at what does this verb mean? The verb that Paul uses has a verb of pow, as actually means like pause. In English, you have pause. That is what pow means. But this is another word connected to pow, and which means not just pause, somebody who's running around, very worried. You give them rest. Rest. 
you put the ullangal of god's people at rest because we are so disturbed now tell me where do you feel when you are feeling fear where do you feel it you feel it your fear here or you feel your fear here ah don't be use the word butterflies in my stomach why do you say that that means you feel nervous here correct the word here paul uses is not cardia cardia cardiology heart correct cardia cardia okay but the word here paul uses in greek is another word very interesting word splankna i know this is greek but you can try to say it. splankna say that splankna splankna means intestines that's why king james literally translates it as bowels though we don't use that language so what is he saying how do you is he a intestine doctor no what he's saying this is a very first century idiom when you refresh somebody's guts sometimes in english you use the word guts and sometimes we say i have a feeling in my guts we feel it here i have a gut feeling correct gut feeling paul is saying you my dear brother you are an amazing man when people come to you you put their guts at rest today a lot of language in medicine about gut health very important the kind of food we eat to take care of the guts but what paul is saying is you help people in such a beautiful way they come to you they are troubled they are worried and we all feel the worry it's like our guts are moving all over the place but when they meet with you the way you deal with them you put their guts at rest Amen. hallelujah Amen. when we love people that's what we do when we genuinely love people we put their guts at rest Amen. this man philemon is known for that for so people who are around him now my guess is my guess is how does he do that he has some wealth and he uses it i believe sacrificially here we talked about a magician who doesn't claim to be a follower of jesus right but what has he done with his wealth he has chosen to give away his wealth to serve a group of people amazing what do you think those people feel what do you think the mothers and fathers of those children feel about this man he puts their guts at rest amen that is your friend philemon get to know him maybe you and i can learn from him how we too can make people peace feel peace here deep down they will feel cared for they will feel loved whether we have the money and use it or whatever our time sometimes the greatest gift you give to somebody is your attention i'm learning that it's not easy for me i i talk too much and i need to learn to listen sometimes just listening to somebody is the greatest gift you can give to them because when we somebody says we want to talk we have so many things already we are thinking what to say when we are somebody is saying right but we need to learn to give our time we can give this he refreshes the hearts of god's people wow now paul is going to come to his point usually there is a preface and now paul is going to make his point, point. what is his point therefore was it although in christ i could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do you know paul is senior to older to philemon but let me tell you one thing philemon probably in the social order philemon is little higher than paul just you see these two people standing dressed you can see who is of a higher order paul's dress and philemon philemon is well off all right 
and yet spiritually paul is his father so paul says i can tell you what to do but i am not going to command you he says yet i prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love it is as none other than paul and then he says an old man <laughs> how old do you think paul is old man see please understand today we have people who live till 80s and 90s right in those days people did not live you you just google and search what was the average age in india 100 years ago or 200 years ago the average age was very low people died a lot of things because of disease today we have better medicine and healthcare so people live longer so in those days 2000 years ago probably probably you have him in his 50s only but he's calling himself an old man it's my age uh, maybe even younger than me and he says i'm an old man i appeal to you now he comes to the point i appeal to you for whom my son onesimus okay we're going to read a little bit more who is this onesimus by the way the word onesimus is a very common greek name the meaning of that is useful useful how many of you like to give your name to your son useful <laughs> useful fellow <laughs> we don't may not like to give but slaves were often given that name good slaves useful fellow we have to use him that's all and that's his name who became my son while i was in such chains ah now we have some thing by the way paul doesn't explain everything for for you because you may not know i may not know but we have to do a lot of reading between the lines so what has happened this is probably what has happened onesimus is a young boy maybe 18 19 20 something like that he is a slave in those days slavery was very common in the empire christians had slaves and christians some of them were slaves because slaves found the gospel also very attractive but when slave owners who had slaves already you know you buy when you go to the market you buy a cow you can also buy a slave that was how it was in the first century common and so for whichever way we don't know this boy has become a slave he's a slave now if you are a slave if i was a slave all slaves i think dream of being free right who wants to be a slave so you dream now life may have been okay in philemon's house but he's still dreaming if i was free i would like to live my own life i don't want to be told what to do i want to be free i hear that you know this big cities like rome if you can somehow go there like many young people run away from home and go to bombay or bangalore right they think there i will make it big and somehow life will be nicer so he has run away we don't know why we don't know why we cannot read too much into it but when he ran away and he came again we don't know exactly where paul is he is in prison but which prison we are not 100% sure but a good guess could be it's rome good guess can be 100% sure so paul let's imagine it's in rome paul is in a prison prison by the way is not like today's prison today if you want to visit somebody in prison you have to take permission you have to go through three doors gates correct those days it was different you could take things for your maybe you have to bribe those guys just like today and uh, you can go do things for him then come back so maybe he reached rome and he suddenly realized life is not so nice and began to realize i think it was better in philemon's house but he cannot just after a few months go back and say i have come back right in those days a runaway slave to be a runaway slave is a crime you can be beaten up you can't run away they are bought so you can't run away and uh, so how do you come back if you want to come back there was sometimes a way that you came back is you found a friend of the master and you went to that person and said ayya if you can you know i i think i'll go back if you can 
recommend. So then the friend will write a letter. You know, there's a Latin phrase for that, amicus domini. Amicus means a friend, domini of the Lord or the master. So you go through that friend and then slowly. So maybe he thought, and then maybe he heard, these are things we don't know, that Paul is in the same city in the prison. But he knows who Paul is. He knows, yeah, my boss, my master, he knows, he not only knows, he loves Paul. Paul is his guru. Oh, so he will do anything for Paul. So he goes to meet Paul, but in that meeting, this boy also becomes a believer. So it looks like he was not a believer till now. So Paul says he has become my son. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine Paul? So Paul also is a very real man. Okay, he's not just great preacher. He's a man who is willing to call a runaway slave his son. That kind of relationship. He's my son. But he's going to say more. Formerly he was useless to you. Now he has become, he, he can become useful to you and me. Very interesting. Now, there is a play, now this is not known and seen in, in the English or Greek, but uh, English or uh, vernaculars, but he plays with words. Let me just show you how he plays with words. In the first place, he was useless to you. He uses a word, akrestos. Now the word, any, many, in many places, English, Hindi, um, and Greek, a word, you put an a uh before it, it becomes the opposite. For example, theist. Who's a theist? Who believes in God? A uh, before that, atheist. What happens? Does not believe in God. Like that in Greek. Sometimes it is done. So you have krestos means useful. A uh, krestos means useless. Okay, so he's, he uses, he, before he was a uh, krestos, he was not useful, but if you know there is a play in the sound with another word, Christos sounds like Christos, Christ. So he's kind of saying playfully he was without Christ. But now he says he has become Eu Christos. Eu means what? Eu. Many of our English words Start with the E-U and you know the meaning. Eu de cologne, right? You heard of that? We have words like eulogy. What is eulogy? A good word spoken usually at the funeral of somebody. Euphemism, how you use a good word. So eu means good, okay? By the way, gospel, what is the, mean, the word in Greek? Euangelion, good message. Euangelion, correct? So, you Christos, now he has become good, useful to you. He's become a Christian. Very interesting. So he's saying, now I'm going to send for you. Him. Now look at verse 12. I am sending him who is my very ah, again heart. If you have King James, what does it say? Bowels to you. Verse 12. So, can you imagine? You call somebody else your bowels. Now that is first century idiom. Okay, We all use different idioms in our languages. Maybe in Malayalam you have the chang. I don't know. Yeah? Something chang is what? liver I think. Eh? So something very dear to you. And I am sending him my bowels. Now, remember verse 7, what is Philemon known to do? Refreshing. Refreshing or giving rest to God's people's bowels, guts. Now, Paul says, here I am sending you my guts. Amen. So, what are you supposed to do? Do what you do for everybody's guts, my guts also. What? Give me peace. So, <laughs> when this boy will come finally... Tychicus will come with that letter. Tychicus gives the letter to Philemon. He's reading the letter. He can see behind him 
This boy is standing with his head down. Who? Onesimus. What is he going to do? Here he sees, what is that? He's not a slave boy anymore. He's Paul's guts. Is he going to beat him? <laughs> Look at the play of words. See the way. This is, this is not just about theology, what we believe and all that. This is how our faith, when the rubber hits the road, as we say, our faith must make sense Amen. in life, real life. Yes. Living in the real life with Amen. things, with money, with relationships. And he says, I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me. What is he, Paul, saying, you know? When he came here, he came to know Christ, but he's used to working as a slave. So at once he would have taken over whatever he can do for Paul. Maybe he'll say, your clothes need washing. He'll wash his clothes. We need to cook something and give you. So he's serving Paul in prison. Maybe he gives him nice leg massage. I don't know. But he says, he is doing what you would have done for me, but you don't know about it. He's doing it for me. So now, I did not want to do anything without your consent so that any favor you do would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. By the way, today, if you are saying, oh, I really wish, you know, we could have milk and your neighbor's cow comes into your house. Do you say God has provided?